Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on January 16th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, where we look at space weather, world weather, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Having a quick look at the last 48 hours on the sun, 304 angstroms, still some active earth-facing sunspots, and as well, a coronal hole to talk about. But no major space weather events have been thwarted our way. Most of it has been on the backside. And again, as reported last update, a glancing blow. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, we do have one cresting sunspot there on the right-hand side and the left-hand side. Looks like the left one diminishing after it fired away something. Looking at outgoing here. No major events to talk about except for the flare on the right-hand side, right there. Large coronal mass ejection. As well, watching this quickly forming sunspot. Pretty active to say the least. As I reported a couple days ago, we are still above, well above the predicted values for sunspots. Looking at multi-spectrum here. Also watching this region. 171 angstroms where we can see the coronal hole. A dark earth-facing region. And we are already seeing the effects being seen in our solar wind. From that large earth-facing coronal hole. Looking at the ISWA space prediction spiral for the next seven days. As you can see, that little orange circle coming in for a retrograde. And that CME shot away towards uh, Stereo B. Also having a quick look here at Lasco 2 and 3. This is what the last 12 hours of imagery. Thanks everybody for joining the family. Daily events worldwide, keeping humanity aware and prepared. Real-time solar wind, we are up over 620 kilometers per second right now. Geomagnetic storm is in effect as we've been well over 500 kilometers per second for the past day and a half from the coronal hole wind stream. As well, looking at solar x-ray flux remains in the B and C range. And now we are in a G1 geomagnetic storm just like yesterday around the same time. Thanks to the coronal hole wind stream. Schumann resonance for today, a power of 19, slightly elevated. But definitely there is a hum across the planet. And if y'all didn't know already, we had quite an event yesterday. Large Hunga Tonga volcano, submarine volcano erupted, sending tsunami warnings across the Pacific. Let's look at earthquakes here the last 24 hours, starting out here with the largest and deepest, 6.1 in Panguna, Papua New Guinea, 408 kilometer depth, as well as 5.3 here in Vanuatu, 196 kilometer depth, a couple semi-deep earthquakes here in Fiji, 4.5 Haifo, 149 kilometer depth, as well Naifu, Tonga, 4.6. Activity up into Papua New Guinea, or sorry, Indonesia, as well a deep earthquake here, Timor Lest. 4.9 here reported in Agat Village, Guam, and a 5.2 Hulian City, Taiwan, 52 kilometer depth, quiet through Japan. 4.6 there in Malabo, Indonesia. And then across the Arabian plate today, a 4.6 and a 4.8 reported 10 kilometer depth, Iran, as well a 4.4 here in Zengalan, Azerbaijan. And then we get to Greece where we've seen sizable earthquakes today, a 5.1 followed by 4.0, 4.6, 4.2, as well a rare earthquake here, Romania, 4.3, 140 kilometer depth, Turkey also seeing a 4.1. So across the world, we were definitely seeing a lot of action yesterday, and we're still seeing action here. South Sandwich Islands reporting 
two 5.3s, one east of the Michael Volcano and one south. I do believe that that's going to be the next volcano to go. 4.5 here, Oval, Chile, as well as 4.4, Peru, 111 kilometer depth. Looking across the Caribbean plate here, largest to report, 3.7 Puerto Rico, as well Dominican Republic there with a 3.3 and a 3.5. Looking across the United States, lots of earthquakes in Texas. Toya, Texas, 3.0, 2.5. And interesting, we do have a geyser that has since opened up in Texas, West Texas, looking at this huge feature, 90 to 100 foot tall geyser spewing out salt water. And that's why it's turned white all around here, all around the region, as it has already released 25,000 barrels of briny water. And it began to erupt on New Year's Eve quick look here at this massive geyser that is still ongoing in Odessa, Texas. Amazing stuff. Our planet is under a lot of pressure. Wow. Minor earthquakes there. California. Fern Forest, Hawaii, reporting a 3.5, 6 kilometer depth, largest through the region, as well the lake has drained a little bit through the Kilauea caldera. And that is the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Also, I wanted to point out here, a 4.5 that was reported yesterday, not El Salvador, but Greenland. 4.5, Greenland yesterday. And we had tsunami warnings straight across the Pacific, east and west, Hawaii, Japan from that large Hunga Tonga eruption. Caused a 5.8 earthquake and tsunami waves across the Pacific. One to two foot swells in some areas. Luckily, no one was injured. Having a quick look here at the last seven days across the planet. Increased activity here through Europe. And as well, South Sandwich Islands keeping an eye on that. Let's have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center showing satellite imagery and as well, the most recently updated volcanoes across the planet. And of course, we start out here with the Hunga Tonga Hunga volcano, Tonga region, Sangay in Ecuador, Nevadas de Ruiz, Colombia, Nevadas de Chilean, Colombia, Sabancaya in Peru, Raventador in Ecuador, Shevaluch in Russia, Simru, Indonesia, Swiss and Ajima, Japan, Fuego, Guatemala, Karamiski, Russia, Yasser, Vanuatu, Semes de Pochnoi, United States, Popo in Mexico. Speaking of Mexico, we just recently had a 5.3 right around Popo in Mexico. Not reported on this update, but just got in while I was recording the audio. Having a look at the satellite imagery, still a large system in the Pacific, grinding and sucking in other low-pressure systems. No cyclones to talk about as Cody has diminished, and as well, Tiffany. Overlooking the rest of the world, satellite imagery. We had tornado warnings popping up from Florida and northward. They've also got flood alerts. And now you've got a winter storm warning on your doorstep. For most of northeastern United States, you're going to be seeing at least 12 to 16 inches of snow. Much heavier amounts off the lakes as it mixes with snow squalls. And this system will bring quite a bit of snow to Ontario as well. Having a look here, the five-day forecast brought to you by Meteor Earth and daily events worldwide. 
We're going to start out here in home base, Ontario, where, yeah, we do have that winter storm coming, but we also have this big blob of cold air coming down as well. Minus 25 at the end of this forecast. Having a look here, though, Monday into Tuesday, quite a big system. We'll be dumping a lot of snow across northeast United States and Ontario as it heads into the Atlantic provinces. Rain on the front, snow on the back for Atlantic provinces, mostly snow for Ontario as the cold temperatures are lingering. Minus 24 in the long range. And look at these cold temps. They are dipping way down, folks. This is a little much. That cold front has reached the Gulf of Mexico. Wow. Long line of moisture stretching from the Gulf of Mexico up to Greenland. As well, we've got a low-pressure system coming out of Alberta this week. Tuesday, Wednesday, you will see a snowy event and that very cold high-pressure ridge moving in behind it, drying things out and freezing everything in place. Dry throughout the week for the United States Central up until Wednesday and Thursday. Watch for heavy snowfall through northern BC and as well Alaska this week. Big Pacific low coming in. But yeah, it's the cold temperatures, the big talker here for the North American plate. Overlooking the Atlantic, interesting low pressure system here. It's about two low pressure systems that have joined forces. Looks like it's heading back to Africa. Overlooking Europe, still got winter storm conditions ac across eastern parts. High pressure ridge for central up until about Wednesday, Thursday. Watch for snow to move in. And as well, higher elevations through Greece. Heavy snowfall, higher elevations through Kuwait, Qatar, and eastward into Uzbekistan. Overlooking Russia and China. Mostly dry, except for later in the week, some rain moving in for China. Big low coming off of Japan here, out of the Korean Gulf. Going to bring some heavy snowfall totals towards coastal regions, Japan. Overlooking Indonesia, Malaysia. Daily evaporation rains, no cyclones to develop. Looking at some pretty heavy rains through eastern Indonesia, though. And then we get to Australia, where we have diminished cyclone Tiffany, which is not going to leave the continent here. You can see in the five-day forecast, it's going to swing around and then head west again. Or just hang out in the central regions. So watch for extreme weather throughout the week and as well flash flood alerts through Australia. Looks like Cyclone Cody just missed New Zealand. No major weather systems brewing up for Hawaii. Overlooking South America. Daily evaporation rains will be heavy at times through Argentina and the border with Chile. Later in the week, Thursday, Friday, big low moving into Argentina. And then we get to Africa, where we still have an atmospheric river of moisture affecting them as well. Coming out of the Indian Ocean. Watch for heavy rains, Madagascar, Zimbabwe, Mozambique. And this long line of moisture here from central Indian Ocean just keeps flooding into Madagascar and Africa. I'm going to leave you here looking at the southern hemisphere versus the northern, pointing out the major lows that are spinning across our planet. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Daily Dew, full five-day forecast, space weather update, and earthquakes. Much love to you all. Stay aware, prepared, stay young, and have fun, and get your Daily Dew. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.